Yellowstone supervolcano. USGS reveals where a magnitude 7 earthquake could strike the supervolcano. This is today's article, Tom Fish on Express UK. As we know, Yellowstone is the home to one of Earth's largest volcanic systems. It's a supervolcano. And the USGS has now revealed where the park's most violent volcanic explosions could occur. Yellowstone National Park is peaceful, it's beautiful in the Wyoming wilderness. Photogenic mountains, fertile forests, wild animals, tranquil lakes. But underneath Yellowstone's surface, there's a totally different picture because the entire park is actually sitting on top of an active supervolcano caldera and is packed with enough power to decimate the entire continent and change the climate of the entire world in the event of a super eruption. USGS scientists have just made a seismic discovery about the most dangerous areas in Yellowstone that are capable of triggering larger events, quote unquote. A recent USGS report on the processes capable of forming faults at Yellowstone surface reads, the Basin and Range Province, a region in the western United States characterized by alternating valleys and fault-bounded mountain ranges. The Basin and Range Province began forming at this altitude latitude about 15 million years ago as the Earth's crust was stretched in an east-west direction. The easternmost boundary of the Basin and Range Province reaches western Wyoming, including Yellowstone National Park and the Teton Mountain Range, and contains faults that are still active and capable of large earthquakes. We have here maps showing the various faults north and around the uh, Yellowstone Lake. The caldera encompasses over half the lake. And uh, we see resurgent dome faults, volcanism and caldera faults, basin and range faults. Uh, we have uh, in the lake, Eagle Bay Fault running north-south directly through the lake and to the east of the lake we have upper Yellowstone Valley Faults. To the south of the lake we have East Mount Sheridan Faults. To the northeast of the lake we have the Mirror Plateau Faults. To the west, we have Island Park Caldera Rim Fault. Next to that, just west of West Thumb Lake, we have Lava Creek Caldera Rim Fault. And uh, northwest of West Thumb Lake, we have Mallard Lake Resurgent Dome Faults. And north of the lake, we have Sour Creek Resurgent Dome Faults and Red Canyon and Hebgen Faults are northeast of the lake. So you can see it's full of faults everywhere. Uh, the various earthquake swarms that we've had are close to the new thermal area that has been found that the geologists will be examining, observing, taking a field trip to, now, this month, that the field trips have begun as of May 1st, they still have four feet of snow up there, so it's difficult for them to get to that site. There's no roads or paths near there, but they have to ascertain what that new thermal area is. Now, whereas other faults in the park are considered to be capable of medium-sized earthquakes, magnitude 5 or 6, which is pretty big for a supervolcano to have. Basin and range faults could produce larger events in the range of a magnitude 7 earthquake. 
Yellowstone has witnessed as many as 87 tremors in the last 28 days, and uh, which some geologists have interpreted as an indication of an imminent eruption at the supervolcano. Because as geolog some geologists state, it's not the magnitude of the earthquake that counts, it's the quantity, how many earthquakes you have. The biggest of the recent earthquakes was a 2.5 magnitude on the Richter scale. It struck on May 7th, according to USGS data. Well, actually, they had a bigger one before that, a month, just about a month before, in April, early April. They had a 5 magnitude, which was downgraded to a 4.4, but we never heard more about that. Uh, we expected Caldera Chronicles to give us the details concerning what that could mean, but they never mentioned that again. Now, most of other earthquakes have been of similar strength, 2.5, but experts believe quantity is as important as the strength. Professor Scott Burns of Portland State University has said a spate of small-scale tremors around the volcano signifies magma and gases beneath the surface are beginning to concentrate. Professor Burns said, if you get swarms under a working volcano, the working hypothesis is that magma is moving up underneath there. However, others disagree about whether a spate of earthquakes surrounding a volcano could be a sign of things to come. Jamie Farrell of the University of Utah Salt Lake City believes this is just part of a natural cycle for Yellowstone volcanoes, saying earthquake swarms are fairly common in Yellowstone. There's no indication that this swarm is related to magma moving through the shallow crust. If the Wyoming volcano were to erupt, that means that an estimated 90,000 people would immediately lose their lives because they would be so close to it, and two-thirds of the United States would immediately be made uninhabitable. We're talking about the event of a supervolcano taking place. The eruption of a supervolcano. Now, a large spew of ash into the atmosphere would also block out the sunlight, and directly affect life beneath it, creating a volcanic winter. Now, as we said before concerning the earthquakes that we saw today, uh, USGS doesn't have that many listed, but I go to a site called uh, Alatra, and uh, we've had, well, they were not small. We've had north in Montana, Browning, South Browning, Montana was a 2.88 magnitude Richter. And then south of the uh, Caldera, we had a 2.94 in Soda Springs, Idaho. That whole area, of course, is around the supervolcano. Then closer to the supervolcano, we had a, a Butte, Montana, uh, 1.79, just, just today. And another one of 1.06 at uh, six kilometer depth. But these are the, the ones that are reported. There's a lot more that are recorded that uh, are not reported. These are just the main ones. We'll have more on this on the next video, which will have to do with the recent Yellowstone Caldera Chronicles that just came out today with more details as to what's happening with Yellowstone. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. 
and we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.